Kelsey, among philosophers who are looking at the nature of consciousness, it's been a movement to talk about the importance of the environment, not just in a generalized way, but in a very real sense that you can't understand human consciousness without embedding the environment in, in a very strong way mm -hmm. uh, to make sense out of uh, human consciousness. From your perspective as a, um, a neuroscientist, a cell biologist, looking at neurons, uh, how do you view the importance of the environment in not just perceiving the environment, but really as a fundamental part of what it means to have a mental state? So I think of our, our, our neural circuits, or our brains, as really being the seat of our consciousness and our, our experience as human beings. And those are in part hardwired. So mm -hmm. we have genes that in, in our DNA that will give rise to that neural circuit. But this, the whole idea about plasticity, or brain plasticity, is that it's not just hardwired. That there's a dynamic interplay with the environment and that the environment affects the genes that are expressed and is going to in turn affect the connectivity of the of the neurons in the in the uh, brain and in that circuit. So I think that you can't really think of them as separate. Again, the the whole circuit is responsive to the environment all the time. We're mm. interested in how genes get turned on or off by uh, different types of stimuli. Those stimuli are coming from the environment from many different types of, of uh, of conditions, whether it's your uh, emotional conditions in the environment, whether it's physical conditions, that they're going to affect the way that the, that your neurons are, are um, firing. They're going to ex uh, affect the gene expression, and that's going to in, in turn affect how they're connected to one another. And this affects everything. This affects the development of, of a baby into a young person, then an adult, and all the mental maturation that, that they go through. And it affects the learning of very simple uh, uh, animals that you deal with in, in your research. It, it's the same thing, but they all go back to the what's happening at the synapse between the, the neuron. Uh, but that's, is, that, is that where the environment has, the, has the, the deep connectivity? I think so. I mean, there are some beautiful studies looking in rodents and mice and in rats and rearing them in what are called enriched environments yeah. versus just in a cage, a home cage. And right. some of the enriched environments can have toys or they can have, I'd see some where they have, Wheels. they look like Mardi Gras beads hanging <laughs> from the ceiling. Um, and that leads to changes in the connectivity in the brain. It increases their, the ability of the, of the um, uh, rodents to form new memories. Uh, it clearly changes their, the wiring of their neural circuits. And how does that happen? Um, I, I think that it happens because there's uh, just as if when we, uh, for, for humans when they're aging, there are lots of studies that show that it helps to do things like crossword puzzles to keep mentally mm -hmm. engaged all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same thing with physical fitness. We all do much better if we engage in some sort of physical activity on a regular basis. Yeah, so, I, I've heard that analogy and it makes sense, but I, I, I'd like to really understand it in, in other than the, the, the superficial way. Right. I mean, I know if you have aerobic exercises that you get your heart moving and it's good for, that's good for your, right. for your heart power and your, and your lung system and your blood pressure, your weight. But what does that literally mean in the mental world? If that, I am doing crossword puzzles or I'm learning a new language, uh, what is literally going on that, 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 that has a generalized benefit to me? That you, your neural circuits are more active so that they're firing more frequently. You're trying to remember a word for a crossword mm -hmm. puzzle, so you're firing different uh, synapses between neurons in the brain so that's that's how I think about it again it's not clear there have been studies that have shown that uh, there's some you can put a little window in the skull of a, of a mouse and you can in that mouse label some of the neurons with the fluorescent dye genetically so that you can visualize the connections the synaptic mm -hmm. connections between neurons mm -hmm. in the brain and enriched environment will lead to a more dynamic change in those synapses so there are more synapses they change more rapidly so that's an indication that there really is a physical change in the neural circuit and the number and the strength of synapses between neurons with that kind of environmental enrichment so you see a direct relationship between the environmental enrichment in rodents and the extent and strength of neural circuitry? You do, yeah. And then, 
you, you do. I mean, I, I hesitate because I, it's always hard for me to say something's direct. Oh, right, because I right. really get down to, well, is it direct or is it because it changed this and that changed right, it? But right. you do see that. Certainly that there's effect, a high right. correlation. There's a high correlation. Okay. Um, what about the uh, generation of new neurons? This has been a controversial yeah. area. Go back several decades. The assumption was we never grew new neurons. We sort of gradually lost them right, as right. we age, right. which you know was, was the depressing factor. And more recently, people are saying that maybe maybe we make new neurons as, as adults. Is that right? That is right. And in particular parts of the brain, there are new neurons that are made. They're also responsive to the environment. So there are studies that show that exercise promotes the survival of those neur new neurons. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of interest in the idea that those new neurons will integrate into the circuit and in some ways kind of rejuvenate that circuit because they bring new components and uh, new molecules uh, to the synapses. In, in so what you're saying is that the new neuron creation is a normal process, but, but once that occurs, depending upon our physical or mental activity, that can be enhanced or encouraged. Sure, sure. And if they're not properly cared for, they could die or... Right. Well, it's, important. so I think it's a pre, it's a it's a nascent field, the field of new neurons. Right. Not to make a pun there, but mm -hmm. it it and and so we're learning a lot about that field. And there are some studies that show the exercise promotes their survival, the antidepressants promote their survival. So one could imagine that depression and and lack of, of huh. activity would would huh. as you say sort of allow those neurons to not survive and mm. that would affect mm. the, the circuitry of the brain. And how important in the learning of new materials are the new neurons compared to just new synapses and old neurons? Right. Well, I think that's in the we don't know that yet so there are a lot of experiments being done I think we that's something I think we'll know in a few years mm. I really do mm. have the feeling that we'll know more about that in the few years as we develop tools that can label specifically those new neurons um, certainly the evidence to date suggests that they're very important for memory formation the new neurons. Uh, and, and certainly uh, though no matter what the importance of the environment and the development of the nervous system you can't you can't have one without the other. No, you can't. Mm -mm. I mean, I never think you know. There's the old, old, old debates um, when I was in college mm. about nature versus nurture. nurture, and those really feel to me just sort of like moot debates because they just they go hand in hand. That you know you have your genome, and that gene expression is regulated by the environment. So it's almost impossible to think about one without the other.